So this is Andy from later in the video and I can't believe that this has happened but I recorded this section already and the camera has decided to wipe that from its SD card so we're gonna record it again. Before I do that remember to like and subscribe and let's get on with the video. What's up team, welcome back to my channel, my name is Andy. Um, basically my camera has decided to wipe one of the videos that I filmed, which you will see, it'll cut back and forth to me in my room and then me in this office. So, sorry about that, but hopefully today I will be able to give you some really good tips that will clarify and kind of open up your world to how to study anatomy because trust me, I understand what you guys are going through. Studying anatomy can be so daunting, so overwhelming, so if I can help you guys in any way, then that's all I want. I think when it comes to studying generally, there isn't really a one size fits all because everyone has different methods that work best for them. Um, so first things first, before we begin, I think it's best, and this is something that I actually got asked to do previous to commencing one of my placements, and it was a quiz, a 20 question quiz, just to kind of figure out what type of learner you are. So there's an auditory learner, a visual learner, and a tactile learner. I find I'm kind of an in-between. I think I'm like 35% visual, 35% auditory, and 30% tactile. So if you have no idea where to start, this can be some huge insight into what could work best for you. Yeah, so I understand what you guys are going through. It's a very overwhelming experience. And when you kind of come new and you see all these new terms and all this information, you're like, how the heck am I gonna have this down? And how am I gonna like remember all this information? So hopefully this will help you guys out a little bit. So the way I'm gonna split up this video is kind of in, into 2D and 3D, which doesn't really make sense, but in my mind, let's go with it. Um, so 2D is gonna focus a little bit more on your websites, your textbooks, Books, your note taking and then 3d will focus in on um, kind of models your applications which provide 3d images and yeah so I'm gonna try and hit you with a variety of different ways so then you can really find what works best for you so let's start with textbooks and textbooks is probably something that I get asked about very often I didn't actually invest in a textbook until later on in my degree because the library actually provided anatomy textbooks I think for me I found online resources and those textbooks books in the library um, sufficient. But obviously if you're someone who wants a textbook, then I say go for it. What I find is when you open a textbook, it can be very intimidating because it's just a thick book with so much information, but they do provide you with really nice pictures. And of course you can kind of make it your own if you like. When you have that textbook, I sometimes worry for other people that they would literally just transcribe, which is something that I'll talk about later in the video. And transcribing can just lead to like not actually understanding what you're writing, but literally just copy pasting. The first book that I actually owned anatomy wise was the pocket book that you get when you join the CSP, which if you are doing physiotherapy, then I definitely recommend joining the CSP. And you do get, as I say, a little pocket book, which which I actually think is really good because you don't want to be carrying those thick textbooks around university. They can be really heavy in your bag. So these little pocketbooks you can take with you to your practicals. But if we go into kind of textbook specifics, the number one that comes to mind is Grey's Anatomy. Now Grey's Anatomy is a company that's very popular within the medical industry. They do a bunch of different resources and textbooks have to be one. They're really well commended, they have kind of all the relevant information and is specific to medical students. So um, if you just wanted anatomy then I'd say stick to that one. The only thing with Grey's Anatomy, I personally haven't really looked into it but I'm pretty sure they don't really go on to the like clinical relevance or like physiological aspect of things which I think if you're going into physiotherapy can be very, very beneficial. So that leads me on to textbooks that actually include, that I know, include that side of things. So the first one was Principles of Anatomy and Physiology, and that one was by Tortita and Derrickson. And I think that was one of the ones that was also in the library. The other one was Human Anatomy and Physiology by Mary Evan Hoem. That one was really commonly used by students in physio. I really liked how they go into the physiological aspects because I find that it kind of made it more interesting because sometimes when you just have so much anatomy you don't really know why you're studying it. I mean, obviously you're doing this every degree, but, but when you put it into perspective it kind of helps you understand why it's important. And then the bundle that I kind of wanted to talk about was the Elsevier, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Physiotherapy Essentials. Um, so these actually, I think that one does have an anatomy book, but what I like is they go into the different modules of physiotherapy. So like your musculoskeletal examination assessment, 
Shutter Your Spirit Tree, so on and so forth. So if you were looking for more physiotherapy based things, then that bundle of um, textbooks is really good. That's what I ended up investing in um, because I found that's what I preferred the most. I think on Amazon you can get them for a cheaper price if you buy them in bulk. But obviously with textbooks, because they are so expensive, you could always like group buy one textbook and then share that anatomy textbook between you. And then the other side of things, which kind of falls under 2D and 3D, is flashcards. I found that you can either buy them or create them on your own. So I kind of did a mix of both because two of my friends had flashcards, but I also created my own to kind of fall within my study process. The two companies that I'm aware of is Grey's Anatomy and I think the other one's Nesser. Um, I highly recommend. They split it up really nicely into different locational parts um, and it's really good for your kind of testing because you can like bring it to your friends and test each other with the flashcards. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so let's have a little bit of a chat about note taking. So first things first, when you're writing notes and definitely if you're taking information out of textbooks or websites, do not kind of copy paste because that is not allowing any understanding. It's literally like you, you could subconsciously do that. Secondly, when it comes to muscles and those anatomical structures, um, I've talked about it before, but I use the format OEN. Um, don't know if that's how you say it, but that's how I'm gonna say it today. Basically, I use this format because there's so many muscles in the body. So this keeps it nice and clear. Where does it originate? Where does it insert? What's the action that that muscle produces? And what nerve innervates that muscle? And I know it can be quite tedious originally and don't put pressure on yourself to actually memorize every single origin and insertion. So if you're thinking of like your plexus or um, certain spinal tracts, then that can connect you, you know, if that specific nerve root, so let's say like the median nerve, is damaged, then you can therefore say, well, that muscle will therefore be impaired, or it could connect to different clinical features of that pathology. So what I would do, especially as I say, because there's so many muscles, is I would actually have flashcards and I'd make it for the upper limb, the lower limb, um, and then it would have like hand muscles, and then I would go into like each muscle origin insertion or whatever. The other thing that I also include in my notes um, is pictures. So if you're an artiste, then you could draw them. If you're a semi-artiste, send it, draw them. If you're not even close to an artist and you draw and you're like, man, I don't even know what the heck that is, then maybe pictures is the best route for you. Print them out, you can put them in your notes, or you know, even if you're doing them digitally, then just drag and drop. And with pictures, you can include labels as well, so that could be good testing. And then the final thing, so that I'm not going like talking about it for ages, is that you can always kind of combine forces with your friends and create a type of cheat sheet that you all have for the rest of your degree and if you want the rest of your life. Um, and I would say do this online. So you could do like a shared Google form um, where you just have like your muscles and then you could literally just have like a table here, origin, insertion, origin, insertion, action, nerve. You can do this on your own as well. Um, and then you just go like muscle, muscle, muscle. So you'd have your muscle, list them all the way down. If you wanted bones, I think the best way to do this is to have pictures and then you could have information next to these pictures. When you're doing your peer studying, you can give them this cheat sheet and you could be like, okay, just question me on everything on the sheet. <laughs> and again, do not pressure yourself to know everything. It takes time. Even when you graduate, you will not have all of these down. Even when you're five years into your physiotherapy career, you will not have them down yet. So do not put that much pressure on yourself. Yeah, I think unfortunately with notes, these notes for anatomy will take you the longest because as I say, it's just the most tedious section. But if you write it down and you cross check it and you make sure that like you're 100% sure that everything you're writing down is from quality resources, then once you do your notes, that's it. Like you only need to do your notes once, which is why I think like putting in the time to solidify your note taking is super crucial. And then you just keep those for the rest of your life. Apart from your paper resources, you've also got your electronic. So the first website is KenHub and even though I didn't personally use it, I still wanted to show you guys it because I've heard a lot of positive feedback, but of course, to get the full access, you do have to purchase a premium membership.
next one as I talked about is Physiopedia. Now Physiopedia is a super simple, easy read um, and they go actually into the majority of conditions that you will come across within your physiotherapy degree and also treatment. So Physiopedia was definitely kind of one of the first things that I'd go to if I wanted to check something or if I just wanted to kind of read into it quickly. But obviously over time, depending on what I was searching on, sometimes I would go into journals um, and research papers, but, but Physiopedia, especially in the first year and because it was so new, definitely something that should be on your list. Um, but as I say, just do not use it as a citation within your written assessments. Um, just use it as a way to develop your own knowledge. And the last website is Teach Me Anatomy. Teach Me Anatomy gives really good visuals. It gives you the, all, like all the information that you need. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I kind of didn't go with KenHub because I didn't really want to pay. So those are kind of the websites, but I also wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about applications. So apps that you can have on your phone because you're not always gonna have access to your computer or um, a tablet or something like that. So I think apps on your phone is also super, super handy because you can check it whenever you want. And I'm just kind of gonna list them because all four of these kind of work in the same way. They show the same thing, obviously quality and the way you work your way around the app is gonna be slightly different. But in terms of content, it's all relatively the same. What you could do, because this is something that I did, was like I'd go on the app store and I'd search up anatomy and then I'd download like about six and then I'd have a play around in each and find which one works for me and then I'd delete the rest. Your first one is complete anatomy. The second one is essential anatomy and they do kind of branch off into essential skeleton which just focuses on bones. And then the last one is human anatomy atlas 2000. So before I end this video, I just wanted to kind of give you just some quick random tips that didn't fit into any category. Um, so number one, some people like to put in diagrams or posters like in the bathroom or in the kitchen. So then it's kind of those times where you're just kind of sitting around doing nothing. You're still actively and actively and kind of subconsciously reading these words. And then the very last thing is be patient. This is a very heavy unit and I totally empathize with you guys. Definitely don't try to cram it in. I know, you know, for some it's kind of, a, you know, a characteristic, a personality trait to procrastinate and leave it to the last minute. Um, but I think anatomy is one of those things that you should just spend time on. All right guys, remember you're not alone. You're not the only person going through this struggle and you're not the only person to have gone through this struggle. Um, it's definitely, and every everybody thing. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you do have any questions about how you're studying for anatomy and if it's the right way, or if you need more advice, please leave a comment down below or message me on Instagram. Remember to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed that video and hopefully it's helped some of you guys out. And I'll see you next week. Bye.